Hey class, we're going to be reading our book today, Platypus Police Squad, The Frog Who Croaked, Chapter 3. Kalamazoo City Streets, 11 a.m. Zingle could barely contain his excitement as they drove to the docks. The unmarked squad car was totally sweet. There were sirens, an intercom, and a flashing light that could be stuck on the roof with a magnet. The squad car was even outfitted with the most up-to-date laptop. He eyed the police band radio and the dashboard like it was a birthday party right there in the car. As he was looking at it, the radio crackled into life. Car 153, officers on the scene are requesting an up-to-date on your position. Over. There's a picture. O'Malley, his eyes on the road, reached for the mouthpiece, but Zingle was quicker. That's a big 10-4 dispatch. Car 153 is currently... Give me that, O'Malley said quietly as he snatched the mouthpiece away from Zingle. Car 153 here coming up on the call and see him now. We'll be pulling into the shipping area in six minutes. He replaced the handset. Rule number one, Ricky, he said at turning to Zingle. No one touches the radio but me. Got it? Zingle slumped down, frustrated. They were probably they were probably moving about five miles an hour. He hated being stuck in traffic. The Kalamazoo Coliseum loomed large up ahead. A huge billboard beside the stadium read, It's your chance to name the new home of the Kalamazoo City Sharks, a Pandini project. Your sharks better. Beside the stadium was a huge construction site where workers were, pre were preparing to knock down the old stadium and build a new one. Zingle rolled his eyes. Look at that billboard. What is it with Pandini? I can't get him out of my fur. He's been pretty busy in the last year or so, agreed O'Malley, traffic as traffic crawled um, to an even slower pace. Compounding the traffic problem, a huge crowd trying to get to the ticket window spilled out into the street. What's up with this, Zingo? Said, Pandini is selling off parts of the old stadium to raise money for the children's hospital, said O'Malley. Totally forgot that's happening today. Zingle scoffed. Really? A children's hospital? What? You don't think sick kids need medicine? It's a win-win. The hospital gets the funds it needs, and the diehard baseball fans get a piece of history. And the new stadium is going to be beautiful. There's the picture of them all in line at the stadium trying to buy a piece for their uh, collection. I think it's a great... It, uh, I think it's great that our athletes are getting a stadium that they um, that their fans can be proud of, and the tickets are set to remain cheap. Brings the city together. Time was there was a time when the poor folks and the richer folks lived on opposite sides of the city, and they didn't intermingle at all. O'Malley said, as he stepped on the brakes again to avoid running down in it an ecstatic fan. I could do with all the traffic jams from the construction though. Now the squad car stopped completely. Zingle tapped his foot and they were never going to get to the docks. He wished O'Malley would do something or maybe it was up to him. Zingle slapped the light onto the roof and flipped on the sirens. The cars in front of them instantly started moving out of the way and like a stampeding herd, the crowd outside the Coliseum scattered, shoving and knocking one another over. What are you doing, Ricky? shouted O'Malley. Maybe that wasn't such a good move, Zingle turned off the siren. Sorry, partner, he said. Thought we were in a hurry is all. Rule number one, I am the senior detective in this car, said O'Malley. I say how fast we go, not you, especially when I'm driving. I thought rule number one was no one touches the radio but you. O'Malley turned on the side road. Rule number two, we're on a case. We're trying to travel below radar here. You want everyone in town to know we're cops? The key is to keep a low profile as possible, as low profile as possible. Got it, Ricky? Yep, said Zingo. Rule number three, this is where your real education begins, Junior. We need to stay tuned in at all times.